Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. So today I'm here to talk about the new moon that took place today, which is the 25th of October 2022. And I also want to talk about the eclipse that we've had today in Scorpio, as well as the eclipse that we'll have on the 8th of November 2022 in Taurus. So I'd like to talk about what's happened or what's built up to this moment. And I'd like to talk about how this will unravel or how most people will experience it, as well as what can you expect from it in the next few months and years. So I think uh, the most pressing situation that we are facing right now in terms of this eclipse, this current eclipse that took place today, is that um, it deals with everything that's financial. It deals with everything that is hidden that's financial. So what you might find is that um, things come to the fore that has not been um, been known before or that has been hidden away. You might find uh, that it also uh, brings to the fore statistics that have not been known before. So it's not necessarily financial, but something to do with numbers, something to do with having counted something or some, even scientific data may come to the fore at the moment that has been hidden away uh, previously. Now, I feel that for some of you, uh, if you've been sensitive, if you are um, in touch with these energies, you would have felt it quite acutely in the last um, two to three weeks. And there would have been some build up already, which you might have had a cathartic release from already at this moment. So for some of you, it might have been a shouting match that you might have had, or it might have been um, some kind of um, of release or parting. There might have been a death um, or a... Um, or some kind of um, a separation, some kind of divorce, perhaps, or perhaps uh, resigning from a job, um, moving on to newer things. Now, as much as they're endings, with endings, they always have to be beginnings, right? Because you end one thing and then you something begins as a result, uh, regardless of whether you intend for it to begin or not. But um, this new moon that we have today, well, usually new moons are all about beginnings. But this new moon, because you have something being eclipsed on the day, it's very much more about what is being eclipsed away, okay? So that job that you might resign from or that marriage that you might be walking away from uh, or somebody having passing away, this is all very big energy that is being highlighted at this given moment. Now, for those of you who have not experienced it as acutely, um, then you would experience it in a different way. Perhaps there's been a change of attitude. Perhaps if you've been a bit depressed, you've found that that's been eclipsed away and that you're able to wake up a bit earlier every day and get a bit more done in your day. Perhaps if you've been uh, brought down a bit by the forces or the energies that have been off late, especially in this last few years, you might feel that there has been a release from that in terms of an illness. You might have developed an illness. You might have um, called, called some kind of virus or something and uh, you are expelling it. There's quite a lot of exp um, um, yeah, quite a lot of um, release of it in some kind of way, whether it's mucus or, or vomiting or something like this. So this eclipse can mean a lot of different things for different people. But I think for those people who are in the sign of Scorpio, and those people in the sign of Taurus, I feel that for those of you, you're going to be affected quite a lot more, even if you have like your moon in Taurus or you have, you know, your rising signs, uh, Scorpio or, or Taurus, or if you have, um, you know, like a, a huge planet like Jupiter or something, you were born in your birth chart in, in that. Now, I'm not an astrologer, so I just want to say that, but I also want to say that you will feel uh, this is who it's impacting. It's impacting people who have that in their signs. And that's a way of being able to to identify how it will affect you and, and whether it will affect you or not. Now, if it's not affecting you at all, you just go with the flow, do exactly what you've been doing. Um, that's wonderful, really. In fact, these eclipses shouldn't really have any um, kind of impact on a person. The only time it has an impact on someone is if you've been fighting something for a long time and now you have to give it up. If you've been trying to come to a certain kind of uh, resolution in your life or some understanding of your life, if you're trying to be, you've been trying to unlock something 
and you've been looking for the key or looking for the keyhole. Like you have the key in your hand, but it's dark and you're trying to find the keyhole. And you've been doing that for some time, like for some years even, uh, with regard to a particular relationship or with regard to your relationship to yourself, in fact, then you're going to find that, because ultimately it is about your relationship to yourself, well, you're going to find that you are finally able to put that key in that hole. And you might be able to unlock that door, but you might not necessarily want to open that door. Or you not, might not necessarily take the action to open that door as yet. So I think that that is an important point because... Um, one might think, oh, it's all about these big things happening and all of that. But it's actually these very simple realizations that um, that are really just coming to the fore. Now, there's another thing with this eclipse. And um, for some of you, uh, it might have brought up certain fantasies that you might have or certain ideas about life. I'm talking about fantasies in terms of love or sexual fantasies or something that is... Um, it's just fantasizing about a particular life that you want to have. Now, you might have found that in the last few weeks, this has been very vivid for you. And you might have been exploring those fantasies at depth. And um, that is also a very interesting um, way in which this energy uh, formulates itself. And I think it's very much a, a kind of healing for the soul or for the consciousness on some level to be able to bring to the fore some of those ideas that have been repressed or have not had an adequate chance to be able to express themselves in the world. All right, so that is um, some of the ways in which this um, eclipse would have handled itself. Now, there's another energy that has been uh, at play from about August till now, which is also coming to an end. And isn't that wonderful? For those of you who have had a foot injuries or leg injuries or some kind of car injury <laughs> well like not that you've had a huge car accident or something like that but that maybe somebody's um, bumped into you and you've got some bruises on your car well not bruises dents in your car excuse me and you if you've been dealing with something like that uh, something or with your car breaking down etc uh either that or something to do with the legs something to do with you know just being able to move about okay maybe you don't have a car maybe you have a private jet maybe you've been having difficulties with your private jet so this is the uh yeah you would have been there would have been that sense so it's almost as if the mercury retrograde that we've just come out of and I don't often talk about Mercury retrogrades, but this one was quite a whopper. And uh, and I think it really was the Mercury retrogrades that all the astrologers talk about constantly. So this was the one, right? So you might have found that, uh, that a lot of people had something like an injury in the lake or had some kind of thing to do with their car or something to do with some mode of transport. Um, you might have also found that you could have gotten into some kind of legal trouble, okay? So you might have, like... Um, just not with expecting it, not with encountering it, not with thinking about encountering it on any level at all, you would have had it slapped on your face. And and I think that that would also resolve itself at around this time, or at least the beginnings uh, of it being res resolved will be will start now. So um, that is also an energy from, I say, would say, about mid-August that has ended maybe about a week ago. And for some of you, it's still ending you'll still feel the impacts of it. Okay, so those are the two big energies. Now, there's also all kinds of other energies at play, but let me just talk about the eclipse first that we're having in November. So I think that for many of the people who have this, the lunar eclipse, which will be on the 8th of November, is a very important eclipse in terms of um, you being able to make decisions about yourself in terms of how you finance yourself, how you actually manage your, um, your, act your income and your well-being. You know, is your income based on uh, doing a nine to five job and getting that salary from there? And what is your relationship to that job and to yourself? Um, you're going to find that perhaps you start feeling like that nine to five job that you might have been enjoying already, or um, perhaps you haven't been enjoying it, but perhaps you've been finding a way to make it work for yourself. But well, you're going to find that that is going to be something that you grapple with. Maybe it doesn't work anymore for you. Maybe you find that uh, it's not worth it for you anymore to earn that pay for that amount of time that you give away. You're going to find also that um, 
that for those of you who are living off some kind of a trust fund or living off some kind of uh, profit uh, or um, excess surplus, sorry, if you have if you're living off a surplus, like if you have uh, rented out some of your properties and you're living off the money that you earn from that, you're going to find that you have some um, some difficulty with that as well. Perhaps uh, your tenants are not paying you or perhaps you have found that that is not the most reliable way of being able to make money uh, or to be able to live off that. Uh, you can't live off that anymore. That's what you're going to be coming to. And so I feel that that is a lot of the prevailing energy that comes up because there's systems that have changed underneath us and there's shifting sands. We're going to find that a lot of things that we have previously depended upon are no longer possible it's no longer possible to depend on those things and so you you might have thought okay well if you're a student and you've had that stipend and that has gone a long way to helping you with everything else you're going to find that oh well now that may be not enough or that may not be um how you know you can take care of yourself in the future and so you need need to know that that is what's going to change for you or you're going to need to have those conversations with yourself or your financial advisors uh, or or just simply redesign your finances so that you can make it work for yourself. For others of you who are um, more liberated in terms of their finances, so they don't really, um, uh, well, perhaps they do work that they really love. So the energy flow from that between the work that they really love and that money, it's like almost like a joy that they, that they experience. They experience this huge joy while doing that and so it kind of cancels out any kind of exchange or transaction the transaction exchange is just a very abundant one uh, what you're going to find is that you you might be thinking about uh about changing your uh your the way in which you live you might think about moving away and growing your own food or moving out of cities and move, growing your own food and and uh, looking after your own energy um, supply, etc. So you're going to there's going to be a lot of uh, shaking. Up. There's a huge shake up taking place that's been thrust upon us. And it's going to be very much about um, understanding what do we do? What do we do to survive at this moment? Now, is it a matter of survival? Is it a matter of you know, do we do we survive or not? Well, I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case. I think that the media might be really pushing that um, on some people or lying about it, gaslighting a lot of people. Uh, but I do think that uh, there is a sense about of it being about survival, like how do we survive? But I don't think it's about, well, will we survive or not? Okay, we're not at that point as yet. And let's just hope that we can surpass that as we um, surpass so many of the asteroids coming towards Earth. So um, that's one of the, 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 the energies that we're going to be confronted with on the 8th of November or leading up now from now till the 8th of November 2022. And I think that that energy is going to be underlying and prevailing for a long, long time. It's going to be for at least another year and a half. So I think that this bunch of eclipses right now, they are, uh, or this band of eclipses, they are going to impact us for another year and a half. So I would say that this energy is underlying us till the end of 2024. Now, so you, what it actually asks us to do is make decisions as term, in terms of our love life, in terms of our marriages, in terms of our relationships and our relationship to ourselves and asks ourselves, well, do we actually want to do this? Is this what's really feeding me? Is this what's really what my soul is here for? That's what the question is. And then, of course, how am I going to transact with this life in order for it to uh, benefit me in a way that allows me to do it on a soul level so I'm not selling out myself at all? in the process and so and i'm not a slave to the system i'm not a slave to the 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 system and to the corporate interests that govern our society and that ultimately uh, rule the planet okay so that is the uh the the energy for for as far as the financial stuff is concerned as far as living is concerned or livelihoods are concerned as far as relationships are concerned now on a more spiritual level uh you might find that um 
very big questions arise for you in terms of your existence, in terms of your mortality, in terms of your your reason for your existence, in terms of your your actual um, desire to continue each day. And what you're going to find is that for some people, uh, and this is quite important, for some people that the, the will to live is getting less and less. So it's, it doesn't come naturally. It just kind of, um, there's a sense of like a depression over all of society. And that's caused by a lot of things, you know, that's caused by uh, our current economic situations, that's caused by our current media uh, narratives, it's caused by what's happened with the, with the pandemic in the last years. But it's also caused by a kind of um, need to reassert our uh, our spiritual bond or spiritual link. And so there is this, this is, you might find that people who are depressed or prone to depression are going to feel that oh, they don't know why they have to live anymore. Now, this is not necessarily something that would lead to people becoming suicidal, although I do think that you should check for that if you do have someone in your midst that is struggling with such things. Uh, with such mental uh, health issues. However, I do think that this question is a very over, it's an overall question that will be, um, will be with every one of us. It will be about, well, do I really want to live? Is it worth it? Is it, is how, how's, how is it actually uh, impacting me? How does this situation that I currently am in impacting me? And why, why do I have to be here? And so I think a lot of those questions come up and it will come up even for those people who've never had that question come up for them before. If you've lived your entire life comfortably, have never had any kind of traumas, have had an excellent childhood, have had beautiful relationships, you also are going to be in a situation where you will have such questions come up for you. And I think that that is uh, going to be something that is going to uh, uncover deeper um, links to your spirituality as well as uh, your own relationship with what one might refer to as God or the universe or the greater energy or the, 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 whatever you call it um, in your language or in your heart. And I think that there's definitely a need for reconnection and the reason for that is because towards the end of last year we went through a huge uh, shift in the energy of the planet and during that time, there were a lot of struggles uh, being fought and lots of oh, the lights just gone away as I talk about this particular subject. <laughs> but yeah, the, literally there were huge struggles of uh, difficulty. And so as a, as a result, the connection between the divine or what you are divine, every single being is divine, but the great divine or the great divine consciousness, as I like to refer to it, that has become um, really strained or really a bit murky, so you can't see that so clearly. So this energy that the lunar eclipse is bringing to us on the 8th of November, aside from all the other things that I've mentioned, is going to help us to be able to uh, clean up that. And you're going to find that the energy of the planet changes again. And so you're going to find that that happens much more easily. And you might, if for those of you who've been struggling to connect to, to God or to your psychic abilities or to your healing abilities or to your clients or to uh, some kind of, um, uh, you know, if you go and do rituals in a temple or in a mosque or in some kind of church uh, and you find that, you know, you just don't feel like your prayers are being answered or you just don't feel like things are moving in the direction that you need to, you're going to find that just after the eclipse or as we leading up to this lunar eclipse on the 8th of November, that that's going to be a lot easier to deal with. But it does bring all these other questions. And those questions don't necessarily come up right now, but they can come up at some point, I would say within the next 18 months or so. So look out for that. And um, don't let it get you down, okay? Because we are all here for an amazing purpose. We are all here for each other and we are all cells in an organism and we can't function without each other. And so just remember that and remember that we we all need each other and we all have to do our very best so that we can be the best that we can be for this huge, beautiful organism called life on this planet specifically. And I don't just mean human beings, I mean all the other 
living beings on this planet as well. All right. So anyway, that is the, the crux of what's going down at the moment. Um, I just want to talk about one other thing. All right. So there's this, um, there are a lot of, there's a lot of darkness at this moment, whether you feel it in your soul or your heart because you've lost somebody, whether you feel it because you've perhaps lost your job or perhaps you've, you've, you've gotten um, a, a virus that left you with uh, some long lasting um, symptoms. And whatever your reason is, there's lots of darkness right now. There's a lot of heartache and darkness out in the world. And I want to say that um, it's easy for this to kind of become the prevailing um, substance that we drink from. And it's important for every single one of us to tap into the light, okay? To tap into the light that helps you blossom, that helps you light up. And um, recently, well, a few months ago, actually, when I was doing a, a healing uh, and I was I was really despairing because there's so many energies at play at the moment and I've been trying to do healing work and it's been um, challenging to say the least. Well, not as, I wouldn't say it's been challenging, actually. That's incorrect. Uh, it's been rather... Um, it's not being as it's not been as satisfying as it usually is to do it because you kind of know that you can do more but you aren't able to for whatever reason or you're not able to make the, the same impact with the amount of work that you're doing and so the when, when I was confronted with those questions not just for myself but with other healers that I work with what I found is that um, the, the darkness will be as long as people tap into it and as long as people ascribe to that, as long as people ascribe to the fear and the the warmongering and all of that. But uh, there's a very simple way to be able to come out of this and it's just to light up. Okay, and what do I mean by that? It's a single being, you or me, whoever, just sitting there and concentrating on our well-being and being in gratitude and at that moment we light up when we are in gratitude or we are in awe of the life that we have the fact that you can see the fact that you can you can communicate the fact that you have data to watch this right now the fact that you uh, are just able to have everything that you need at your disposal even if you don't have limbs even if you are able to just experience here on some level if you can be in awe of that for one split second, at that moment, you're lighting up. And when you light up, it gives your neighbor, uh, it gives others around you who witness you lighting up, the opportunity to light up as well. And that is the solution to um, overcoming the darkness on this planet. That is the solution to just moving beyond that. Now, that is what is being prevented right now on the planet. And it's up to us as every single individual to choose to light up, to choose to be in awe, to choose to be feel to feel blessed, to choose to be in gratitude in order to be able to overcome um, whatever hardships, whatever difficulties that are in this world right now. And I'm not saying don't be true to your feelings. I'm suggesting that you can be in awe and you can be in a state of being blessed in a divine sense, regardless of what you're going through in your life. You just have to choose that. And unfortunately, we have been conditioned to be somewhat what in a state of never being satisfied enough, whether it comes from advertising, you know, never having enough, always being in a state of lack, or whether it comes from a certain rhetoric or narrative being pushed on by, by the market, or I'm not really sure, but wherever it comes from, it's something that you need to overcome and move away from in order to feel divinely connected, all right? Anyway, I think I've spoken long enough. Uh, leave your questions down below. Uh, I'll answer all of you. And uh, do let me know what you've been thinking about. And uh, yes, I have taken um, a little vacation and I have 
we had some upsets along the way. So I have just not posted as many videos as I would like to, but I, I will get around to it. So don't worry, it will come your way. Um, in the meanwhile, just let me know what you think about some of these things that I've said today and some of this energy that I've spoken about. There's tons more, but I don't want this uh, video to be very long. I think that those are the most important points. And yes, there's so much more that we can speak about. Just um, let me know what you'd like to know about. All right, sending you loads of love. Stay lit and be blessed. Blessings abound from Kismet Rising.